Hello everybody, Nick here again with Scog and Dickie for one of our weekly tech videos. This one actually came from in-house. We actually had a conversation with one of our guys in the sales department and they were discussing how a common phone call they get is the misconceptions of surprisingly pistons to you and me that might seem kind of basic but going back to the basics is not a problem around here. We need to make sure we cover every topic needed for a build. We have a lot of customers that seem to have a misconception about what they need and don't need. We have a lot of customers that hear about a Junkyard Turbo 5.3 with some cast aluminum pistons making a thousand horsepower all day long. And then we hear about other people that just have a stock cammed LS3 and think they need some super decked out coated forged piston. And believe me, we'd like to sell you that stuff. At the same time, a good customer service is to make sure we take care of your needs as you need them and not oversell you on something that you don't. So let's discuss the actual makeup between, you know, cast, hyper-eutectic, and forged pistons, the different kinds of forgings, the different kinds of coatings you can even get on these things, and even kind of the different designs. Some pistons, while both may be forged, are made for different things. The first we're gonna start with is a cast piston. I apologize, I don't even have one here because I couldn't even find one. This is actually kind of older tech, more stock style V8s and older engines from kind of the 80s and back. They went to hyper eutectic and kind of the late 80s, early 90s, most manufacturers, and they use them through to this day. The cast pistons though, were a nice cheap design. For something that was gonna go 100,000 miles and I don't know, your dad's old panel wagon, it was perfectly fine, not a problem at all. And it kept costs down for mass production. That's what everybody wants. They want to save every penny while still being durable. And they were more than durable. But they ended up going to a high silicon style aluminum piston. We all call them a hyper eutectic design. And that's what I have here. This one actually, we believe is out of um, probably one of the Ecotech or one of the direct injected engines because of the, the shape of the, the top of the piston here. But this is what is used well into today. Even in high performance factory engines, all the way through the Gen 5 LTs are still using a hyper eutectic design. And it's still a cast piston. There's no denying that. It is still a cast piston, but it is much stronger. You get some of the strength benefits of using that high silicon design, but you get all the benefits of something that has great wear properties. These don't expand as much as a forged piston, which we'll talk about here in a second for some of you guys that are trying to build a stroker or some high horsepower boosted applications. So for factory applications, these came out to be a really great compromise between going too far and not going far enough, especially with higher compression, direct injected, or even boosted applications. Yes, some boosted vehicles do use a hyper eutectic piston. That's another common misconception. Just like I was saying, guy with an LS3 and a cam wants forged pistons. Well, why? You have a hyper eutectic piston in that engine. There's no need for that. That's overkill. We have hyper eutectic pistons in the LSA. And yes, a 550 horsepower LSA crate engine, both the crate engine and the production engine, of course, they used a hyper eutectic piston. They are very strong. And yes, the rumors you hear about people boosting a junkyard engine are somewhat true. Some people are really pushing those things pretty far. They are on borrowed time, but for us budget builders and just wanting to go scream down the track or you know, head out to Texas 2K in Houston, sometimes that's all we want. But they are plenty strong. Stronger than cast, not strong as forged. Speaking of forged, that's what GM ended up pulling in the LS9 crate engines. Now that needed a forged piston. It was definitely a bigger blower, much higher horsepower. And of course, they wanted to warranty that engine. They wanted to make sure that if you went out and abused that engine, that was one thing that wasn't going to fail. And pretty much what I have in front of me right now is a huge collection of different aftermarket forged pistons. And as you can see, they none of them look the same. And I'm not even talking about the shape of the top. I'm talking about some have coatings, some don't. This is a full billet design. We do have some with some special coatings on the crown here. And of course, this is another thing a lot of people don't think about. The skirt design between some of these pistons seem to vary quite heavily and a lot of people don't think about that. They just think forged is forged and it's not. There's a lot of design that goes into these. Are we building a forged piston for your build that's gonna be an endurance racing? 
Is it an off-road vehicle that's going to see a lot of heavy loads and a lot of RPM or even a drift build? We have a lot of customers actually that are competitive drifters. You have to think about a seven liter LSX engine doing seven, eight, 8,500 RPM going around in a circle, bouncing off the limiter. You need something that's pretty tough. So piston manufacturers make different pistons and piston designs based on those needs. And one of them is a skirt design. They shape them different for different drag or if they want to hold different loads. They of course also reinforce the pin bosses on the bottom for the same reason. What are we building this for? Is it more of a piston speed issue? Are we doing some higher PM endurance racing? Or are we just gonna beat on this on a one mile run on like a thousand or 1500 horsepower boosted LS or big block? And of course the same thing goes for the ring lands. They actually shape these different too. They build them thicker or thinner depending on of course the ring package itself. But of course they want that same strength on there too. You don't want to crack the ring land when you're hitting 15, 20, 25 pounds of boost. So as you can see, there's different ones here. Heck, they even make different kinds. There's of course the 2618 forgings, which is actually the most common. That's the strongest. That's the one that everybody gets for the most part on an off the shelf piston. But of course they actually do make a more street friendly 4032. I think Mala makes one that's really a good balance between the Hyper Eutectic and a full blown, you know, 4032 forged piston. And you kind of need that sometimes in the middle. <clears throat> you need something that is going to be able to fire up every day, drive around, sit at the Whataburger drive through with the AC going, and at the same time, make 800 plus horsepower under boost. And you kind of need that middle of the road piston. They're not as strong, a 4032 forging is not as strong as a 2618 forging, but it's definitely a lot stronger than what the OEM can offer. And like I was talking about earlier, they have different expansion rates. Some of these forgings, when our race shop builds an engine, you know, there are specs that are sent with these that tell us piston to wall clearance. If we're using a hyper eutectic piston, it's pretty snug fit. They don't expand that much when they heat up. So when you finally get the engine up to operating temperature, your piston to wall clearance hits just the right spot. But when a forge piston, especially a 40, or a, I'm sorry, a 2618, is cold and you first fired it up some of you might remember back in the big block days you would actually get a little bit of piston slap a little bit of a knock that might panic you for the first 60 seconds on a maybe a nice cool morning when you fire up your car or your truck and it was just natural these things expand a whole lot more it's the byproduct of that forging i hope i've been able to answer some of the questions here today about what you need what you don't need and some of the big differences and why it's not just you know, a Wisco, a Diamond, a JE piston, or even a Manly piston like we have here. There actually is vast differences between what you're buying for what build. If you have any questions about this, feel free to give us a call or send us a message on Facebook or through our website at sdparts.com. We are more than happy to help and try to answer as many questions as we can to help you with your engine build. Remember, it's no fun sitting in pit lane when everybody else is out racing. We wanna make sure you stay out on the track. We appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. Of course, we get these ideas from our customers. We kinda of got one of these from our customers here. It's a pretty common question. Please give us a like, a subscribe, and a share on both Facebook and YouTube and social media. We're trying to spread this information as much as possible. Thanks for stopping by. See you next week.